Today, one of the most interesting areas on the planet is to look at the 71% of the planet that's not yet been explored, really. Um, there have been some initial explorations, but they're just beginning to scratch the surface. With the kind of technology that we have now with optical communications and uh, the ability to move um, massive amounts of information up from uh, deep under the ocean, we're going to be able to explore the oceans and, and begin to mine and look at the oceans in a whole new way. Today, all data transfer on those robots occurs through that umbilical cord. If that umbilical cord gets cut, lost, bent, then all data transfer stops. By setting up uh, essentially a cellular optical network in the bottom of the ocean, in particular areas of interest, you can go in and not have those long umbilicals and look after the area and then be able to explore that area on a, on a more continuous basis. If you were to use the examples of um, the kinds of robots that exist today that are tethered and going deep under the oceans, one of the problems with those, with those machines is that people pay more attention to the tethers than they actually do the robots because the tethers are the most expensive part and they're potentially kilometers long. By cutting the tethers and putting in systems that allow us to do things, people can concentrate on the tasks that they need to concentrate on. A good example of that would be what happened with the BP oil spill. Because the people in running those robots would be very, very concerned about the tethers getting tangled, as opposed to the actual work that the robots were doing. And this kind of optical system that we can put in place would allow multi-robots without any tethers in an area which could rapidly improve and allow people to solve some of those really dangerous rescue and industrial problems. The, most of the mining discoveries that have occurred in the oceans are around um, the fault zones in the oceans where you get things like what are, what are called black smokers. The earth kind of coming up through and, and depositing um, the metals from inside of the molten core up into the, into the bottom of the ocean. Those areas are extremely mineral rich and um, rich in, in life. As those areas eventually close up, the, the living organisms leave and those black smokers are left. They're extremely mineral rich and if we can go down and mine those, we're now almost in the business of harvesting the equivalent of trees and bringing them up uh, to surface and processing them. And there's massive amounts of these kinds of deposits all over the bottom of the oceans from what we know today, but they're still as yet unexplored. It's kind of like um, if you were to sit back with and look at when Alexander Graham Bell did the first cross the ocean shot with wireless. I mean, that was a monumental occasion. And that ended up being the beginning of the telephone industry. We happened to put cables all over the place in that telephone industry and ended up with phones that were landlines. Today now with how we are able to use radios and get the radio coverage that we have, now we have cell phones. Um, it's going to be very similar to that with the underwater robots. You know, today they're tethered robots that are going up to ships. In the future, you'll see the networks being put in place so that the robots can run pretty well wherever they want to.